Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we will just give it a, a minute uh, to just let people join the call and then I will kick off with um, today's webinar. So let's let's get started and I'm sure people will continue to join us as we we go through and um, welcome everybody to this ingenuity webinar where we're going to be talking about how we can uh, use technology um, digital tools um, as part of learning to improve both the learner and the trainer experience um, and start to show you what's possible today with the use of of technology. I'm Sarah Dander, I'm Head of Policy and Partnerships at Ingenuity, and I'll be your host for our short webinar today. We have some great speakers um, who were able to join us today. Um, and what I'm going to do is ask each of the speakers um, to just very briefly introduce themselves, um, and then we will give them time to talk to you about the work that they've been doing um, around improving the learner experience. Um, so if I stop sharing and I hand over to uh, Dr. Majid to, for a very brief intro. Hi, um, good afternoon everybody. Uh, name is uh, Al Qadir, I'm the CEO of MX Reality and the co-founder of uh, Metaverse Learning and my expertise in the field of uh, digital 30 years in the area of uh, virtual reality and immersive learning. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, Majid. Um, and to Lydia from University College Birmingham. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lydia Gilbert. I am a adult nursing lecturer from University College Birmingham. Um, and I'm going to be talking to you about how we use uh, virtual reality and technology in health. And last but not least, we have Siobhan and Darren from Teesside University. Hi, hello everyone. Yes, I'm Siobhan Fenton. I'm the Associate Dean for Enterprise and Knowledge Exchange in the School of Computing, Engineering and Digital Technologies and we're at the University of Teesside and we're going to be sharing some examples of the kind of work that we've done using technology to support learning, particularly with the work that we've done with partners like Cleveland Fire Brigade, so the Fire Brigade, the police, the NHS um, and that's up in Teesside. Darren, do you want to introduce yourself briefly? Hi there. My name is Darren Abbott. I'm the principal lecturer for Enterprise and Knowledge Exchange, um, same school of Siobhan at uh, Seaside University. And my uh, discipline is all around augmented reality, virtual reality um, in the digital learning sector for, for close to 30 years now. Brilliant. Thank you. So hopefully you'll, you'll see that we've got a really wide range of um, organisations um, who are going to talk to you about what they've been doing in various um, different sectors. I thought it was really important that we didn't just show what's what's happening in, in engineering and manufacturing, but that we were looking at other sectors where perhaps people are doing things differently, more innovatively. Um, so let's, let's see. Um, we're going to run through the, the, the three uh, presentations, the three speakers first. Um, and then we'll have a, a session at the end for questions for Q&A. Um, 
there is a facility um, for you to pose questions. Uh, there's a little um, button at the bottom of the screen, Q&A. So if anybody has questions, please post the questions in the Q&A box um, and I will um, field those questions to the panel um, when we've been through the presentations. So without further ado, I am going to hand over to Dr. Majid, who's going to talk to us about um, the metaverse. Thank you, Sarah. I'm just going to share my uh, screen with everybody. Uh, all right. OK. Uh, I'm going to share with you lots and lots of um, video um, examples. Can you see my, uh, Sarah, it's my PowerPoint slide, just to make sure I've got the right screen? Yes. Excellent. OK. Brilliant. So um, what we kind of, uh, I'm going to explain about how, how we work in an immersive learning solution. So uh, with, within the metaverse, we kind of create uh, our programs based on partnerships. So we work with, uh, with colleges, with universities, awarding bodies and employers to develop our programs by joint forces, uh, sharing cost and, and sharing uh, kind of benefit as well. So the area we try to tackle, which is, I'm not gonna read the bullet points, I really wanna go move into the PowerPoint, into the videos as quick as I can. Uh, so it's really to help with uh, kind of uh, either learn engagement, with uh, reducing cost, um, enhancing pass rate and so on. So this is the kind of area where immersive learning solution, it, it could uh, work really well. People talk about metaverse as a new thing. This is, you know, glad, glad Dana said 30 years in this area. So this is a kind of a long, long kind of episode and, and all technology that has been improved with, with hardware and software, how it's been uh, modified. So what we kind of offer, we offer kind of things could be either delivered online fully but without the need of headsets. So all our applications sit on um, uh, kind of uh, on a server linked to LMS and uh, everyone can access it through uh, their desktop and, and, and laptops, or it could be using headset if required. Uh, and the AR is something we do as well based on we use a mobile phone. I mean, if you if you have your mobile phone already, I'll get you to, to, to play with something later on where you can scan the QR code and show you how we, we do that. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go into examples, show you lots of examples. Hopefully you, you will like what you're gonna see. Uh, by the way, all the slide will be uh, available uh, later on with, uh, you can either have video clips or you can have full access to the programs as well. We can uh, provide it later on. So I'm going to click on uh, two or three examples from here. Uh, I'm going to start with a program we are about to release uh, later this month. Uh, this one, for example, will show you in, in welding and fabrication. If you notice, in, in all our programs, we start with a, a job task to say, here is what you need to do. Uh, here's the process. But rather than put the learner, for example, in real life in a little small bay area, we let them go into um, be immersed within the environment they are familiar with. In this case, if I do welding and fabrication and I come in a warehouse uh, and then what we do in a program, we cover all elements of learning. So starting with, without telling them it's functional skills and math, we will we'll get them to understand about geometry, understand how they can order the material. If they order too much or too little, we'll show them the impact on sustainability. So this is about how you can engage the learner about giving them the multiple things you, you normally do in real life situation. So once they order the material, uh, we're gonna say, okay, you need to go and do uh, select uh, appropriate PPE. So you go into uh, the office and then you will go into select and make decision about what you're seeing. This is an online version I'm showing here. So I can use the mouse and keyboard uh, to work around. I believe in Zoom, you might have that little bit of delay from what I'm saying, but in, in the program itself, it's really worked very, very smoothly. Uh, once you've done the selection in your PPE, then you'll be able to go into the uh, warehouse and you will start very shortly, you will see how you can start setting up the bay uh, and you start working with all the material, all the equipment you need, you normally work on to get that uh, welding process in place. So here, for example, you start working with geometry, how you can work with uh, information you normally get missed out in real life. Every single click you do in the program will be logged and reported to you at the end. Uh, so it could be uh, uh, not only kind of the, the mistake you made, but what, the, the kind of correct and the wrong answers all done in that kind of way. 
show the impact on uh, impact on safety or sustainability, and then more importantly on the technical area. Uh, then you will start be familiar with the tools, and uh, in this case, the torch, how you split it up. If you have the VR headset, then you you will see that in front of you. You can see you feel the heat actually from the torch, but then the online version as as good as uh, as the VR version. So you walk around and you will start doing the process. You can see you've got ticks and crosses at the end, at the bottom of the screen. And that, that'll show you all the kind of mistakes has been uh, made and so on. So as I said, it does take about half an hour. What we do in our program it could be used by the tutor. So it could be as a training aid, where at any time you can stop the program, say, what do you think I should do next? What do I click on? And get all the learners engaged in this way. Or it could be, uh, fully immersive by, by the learner doing that way. So I'm going to get you to, to the end of the scenario just because there's lots and lots of things to show you. Uh, just can, that is when you can do QA at the end. Uh, and once you've done the scenario, you see your result. You've got uh, three different kind of colors, uh, the ticks and the crosses that uh, show you that. You click on each of the answer, and that will give you more breakdown about what, why you got that answer right or wrong, and then what you need to do to get corrective action. So what we always say to our learner, we want you to go back again and again and again until you pass 100%. Once you've done that, we then we bring them back to do the practical uh, training. Uh, I will show you something else, like for example, uh, you do like you did heat pump, and that is when you go into a full uh, finished house. This will give you all the partners work with us from uh, awarding ready to colleges to manufacturers as well. So you'll be able to walk in a virtual house and you'll be able to look at someone else than installation or you go and do full installation uh, heat pump. Um, if you wear a headset and you work, for example, you don't like to work at height, that's a good way of demonstrating the technology and using different devices. So you'll be able to go in the house, walk anywhere you like and act with, uh, click on any items. Uh, you can inspect, you can look at technical data, and you will start work with uh, around the kind of scenario and make mistakes that you do in real life situation. So once you build the 3D environment, that's the beauty about the kind of the area working in, in VR. Once you build the 3D environment, you can get different output of different uh, scenarios uh, um, quite easily and within very short uh, time scale. So again, that will show you like another way you can do a scenario. Again, if I just skip that for you, where you can walk anywhere in the house, interact with any item and make mistakes and learn from mistakes. So it, to us, it makes no difference whatever subject you, you study, uh, we can create uh, an immersive environment uh, on that basis. This is something we did for uh, Scottish Gas Network as part of Scottish Power. Uh, so a number of scenarios, uh, how we can go into, this is a, a, di a digital replica of a real site based near Reading. So this is about how you can go into that uh, environment and be familiar with gas control, uh, how you can do maintenance, uh, how you do full diagnostic. So we've done different ways. You can either have a virtual engineer, will take you around and you can click on anything you want within that site and will tell you what's happening in there and be familiar with that. Or you say, okay, you are in your own, you got fault reported, you go and uh, do the full diagnostic. So that's kind of a real site. Uh, done in that way and you can walk and interact with the items and, and learn from what you're seeing in there. So yeah, lots of kind of immersive uh, situation. We've done things for uh, another quick example, and just to show you the variety of things in engineering related, that's what we've done for network rail. Uh, and that is what's shown here, a VR version of that, it's captured from it. So this is more about to enable you to uh, uh, using a headset and you can uh, teleport to different points. You, again, from going and see the site manager, uh, site manager will give you your job about what you need to do and how you can walk around and then do inspection and uh, uh, safety uh, measurement as well. Uh, in terms of AR, there are a number of ways we can do AR. Uh, this is the bit that I said, if you can take your phone and scan the QR code, what would happen normally in, in our program, we put a QR code everywhere and then get the learner to go and click and uh, scan the QR code and then it will interact with uh, the object. So this is what normally happens in the either could be part of the ENN on the virtual environment. You scan the QR code and that will have, in this case, you can see there, uh, the heart will appear on your phone and you can rotate it, you, uh, augmented with the, uh, your own uh, room background and you can physically move your phone inside 
the heart and you can see the part inside and interact with it and so on. So we, we use different technique with an AR, that's only kind of uh, one way. Uh, I'm just keen to show you two new technologies we are about to release uh, and that we're gonna implement in all our programs. I'll show you, for example, results of a page when you finish and you got a certificate of completion, which you love to LMS. This is, this is a new way we're doing this. It's just more about if I'm a supervisor here, I wanna look at what my student did. I can play back what the student did, not as a video, but I can look at what the learner did. I can see here a track about what they've done, the right or wrong answer. I can skip to any part I want. And I can look, I can either look at a learner from a far distance like that, or I can go inside of the, the person, uh, the virtual body of that learner to see not only about what they did, but what the steps they did, about the, it could be about behavior, it could be about safety, it could be about procedure. So I can revisit the journey of that learner. And I can uh, look at the task, and then if I'm the learner sat with me, I can then explain to them how that should work, and then get them to have another go uh, on that virtual environment. So that's how I can go inside the body of the learner. This is kind of a new things. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else been doing this kind of technique. We've been working on this for about six months, uh, and then we're going to implement it in all our uh, program and solution. So it could be good for assessment as well, uh, or and test if you like. So that's kind of another way of doing uh, kind of immersive learning. Uh, the other part, which I'm going to show you here as well, that we are about again to release, uh, where we call it supervisor mode. So the supervisor mode, what you're seeing in here, uh, two screens, but the learner will be at home and the supervisor could be somewhere else. But I've just put this for illustration purposes where you can see them side by side. So once the learner go into the program, and then if the supervisor log into the program at the same time as the learner, the learner will be notified that the supervisor are there and they can, you can see them. And then basically the learner could say, could communicate with the supervisor, say, look, I need a bit of help. Could you advise me uh, about uh, uh, what kind of, uh, I'm seeing, sorry, I just noticed my video stopped playing. Let me just go back again. Uh, So let me start again that for you. So basically the learner will be able to, to communicate with the supervisor and can have text chat, can have audio chat, uh, or uh, kind of the, the, the supervisor will click and drag and drop items to the learner to say, look, here is what the bit that you need to learn. Here's the bit you can solve the problem and so on. And all that will be logged into uh, some kind of um, LMS where you can look at all the data uh, later on. So that's how it can be the chat between the supervisor and learner. So the supervisor can see what you can see live there and then. And that's to say, okay, that is the learner. I can see what they're doing. I can give them all the help uh, they need. And that's how we can communicate with them. So that's kind of a new way of doing things as well. And we, we are doing the multiplayer environment, which I know is not something uh, new, but that's something we add in our program. Plus we're adding the randomization. So every time you go into the program, uh, we create different set of datas, uh, and then every time you click on that, kind of go into the area, you will see different type of uh, information available to you. So that's what we do on the learning side. We can custom any learning solution for any, any kind of environment, uh, and then create the um, learning program where it could be uh, uh, to kind of independent knowledge, it could be safety, it could be a variety kind of area. Uh, there is another one uh, I would like to share with you. Um, which is what we call it our Metaverse Hub environment. So the Metaverse Hub, it's something else we created, uh, which is, um, if you think about it, we can give you a, a, a college or a university or any, any campus where you, it is kind of fully content managed. So it could, could be controlled not by developers, but by the marketing team, by the tutors, where uh, they can create, we give them a shell of the building, but what, what is happening inside it, it's all controlled by, by, by you. Uh, and it's scalable, so if you can have a building and you might say, can I have another building next door, click on that will take me to another building, we, it can be that easily uh, done. The user interactivity is important. The, the, the person uh, go into the kind of system, they can explore anywhere they like, any virtual space, click on any object, they can download information, brush it, and watch live video, they can attend seminars, augmented reality access, for example, uh, and so on. And all that information will be uh, logged 
and it could have a, a great data uh, analytics behind it. So how that could be used, could be used either, uh, in this case, for example, I'm gonna show you here uh, an exhibition conference we've done uh, recently, where we have about 140,000 concurrent users access the system. So that is more about, you go into a site, this is a digital replica of a site in Switzerland. You got the CO to welcome you into the site. Uh, and what the beauty about this, you can sublet, you can sublet spaces in there. So that sublet could be within your own organization. So say uh, each department in charge of their own area, of their own room, and then they can control that content, what they have. Uh, this is by the way, the character where you can see each other and you can be able to, um, communicate with, by text and by uh, audio or video, uh, you'll be able to attend, in this case, for example, a live uh, summit. Uh, so that is what happened um, in the summit itself, where we have all that kind of, you can see people sitting in there and you can join the summit by uh, join the live chat and you can start clicking on this and participate in, the, in, in that chat, if you like, at the same time. And all that live uh, webinar it appeared on the screen and then you can listen to it and then communicate with that. And then just to make it a bit more uh, gaming, if you like, we created some kind of hidden room where you can go and find a secret room to take you into another environment where you'll be able to, uh, in this case, find information and when give you a reward by finding that kind of level of information. So it's more like a gaming type of thing to engage, uh, in this case, the, the participant within, within the environment. So they can go anywhere they like, and then you can collect points, and then we've done uh, virtual physical challenge and we've done some kind of uh, other challenges as well to reward them at the end of the challenge when they, once they've done that. So yeah, that kind of thing, it's really been a success uh, uh, kind of environment we created. Uh, the other kind of thing we are uh, about to launch uh, in the next 10 days, uh, this one, what we call our Metaverse uh, campus. So this campus will be available for any institution to be licensed uh, from us. Uh, so we created this uh, generic campus, if you like. So you can, if you, anyone interested, you can have it today. It could be up and running. Uh, an hour training, that's all it takes to show you the back end system. Uh, and then basically from that, from that kind of point, you can control all the content within that, within the campus, including, for example, the logo you see there, it says Metaverse Campus, click on the logo, change the logo to your own. Uh, you can change the structure of that building, like just like in real life, you can have any video you want, any brochures, any lectures, uh, any link to any asset you have within your institution. You can have that link to externally. So think about it as a, a web in a web 3D where you can click on asset and then uh, access the asset. Uh, one of the things we are uh, going to do as well later on, you can have access to two that can record their own. Uh, lecture, upload that lecture and students be able to go and virtually to their department and select that information or can select on the lecture itself and get that uh, data. So all that, as I said, the beauty about it, you can you can update it whenever you want to. So you can go to different parts of the building. Uh, the bit that I want to show you here is if I take you into this zone, which is what you call it, the course uh, selection zone, uh, where you can go is, is, are these icons, you, could, you can change them to what, whatever you want. You can set up your own team, Zoom meeting, get the student to go access that Zoom team meetings. Or you must say, can I have different department? So if I click, for example, on the construction department, that will enable me to go into a construction zone. And then again, we'll be immersed within, within that uh, kind of level of information to get what, what I need from there. So I could be walking around there, attend the lecture, and then get familiar with, with my salon. So just click a button, boom, me up there. Uh, this is when you can see other people at the same time, and you could be able to talk to them. So we're gonna do this for career advice, could be for induction week, and or it could be as website in 3D. The final thing I'm gonna show you as I have uh, three, four minutes uh, left, uh, this is something uh, is gonna be launched on Thursday. We've done this for the Welsh government. Uh, and that would be, it's more about how you can engage with learners about, in this case, about cultural awareness, anti-racism. Uh, but again, I'm just showing you the environment we created in here. We'll be able to uh, listen to the, the, in this case, the project manager to tell you about the aim of this project. 
Uh, this is going to be aimed, by the way, for every college and university and school uh, in the UK uh, to have access free of charge. And once you go there, we created different halls. In each of these halls, in the Hall of Fame, you, you see what people do. And then you can click on different experiences. So it could be immersive studies or it could be uh, uh, world uh, timeline. Uh, and you've got curriculum zone. And each of the zones you click on, it will transform you into another uh, virtual environment uh, where you can experience completely different setting and different things. So if, for example, if I click on uh, that hall, uh, that will take me into an, another zone and that will show me into different properties. I go to each property and each family will tell me about their own experience into, uh, for, in this case, into about anti um, racism or cultural awareness to tell them. And they will ask you to go around their house, click on anything you want and uh, understand how kind of they live. Once you've done that, you can go back to the zone and then select something else and then we'll move you into a different zone. For If I just quickly here, just to show you, once I go there, we've done here another kind of hall where it take you into Asia, Africa, Middle East, Europe, and then understand what each kind of organization, uh, what each kind of continent about the culture, uh, awareness about that kind of site. So just click on a button, everything available online, and then you can experience it in that way. So that is to show you, for example, uh, by pressing a button, how you can look at uh, information uh, you need. And then that is all done by, you can walk around any site, you can click on any object, you can augment it with information. So basically, the, the, in this case, the student will feel they can be transferred from one environment to another environment, and they can control what they learning in that kind of way. So everything uh, manageable and then uh, data analytical behind it as well. So yeah, that kind of project will be launched next week. And then as I said, everyone could be able to uh, access to it. I think I've reached in my time now. I'm asking, I've got lots of examples. This kind of slide will be shared uh, exactly what you see in here and you'll be able to click on this video clip to see. Uh, if I go back to that slide again, if you want to access, fully access to the programs, we're more than happy to provide you with, with that information. Uh, that's me. Uh, and then I'm sure my slide will be um, uh, kind of shared with you later on. Thank you very much, Majid. That was um, that was was fascinating. Um, I was um, I was particularly taken um, with the examples at the end about the the, the different worlds. Um, we at event we at Ingenuity have been doing some work in terms of of using technology as a a, a tool for STEM outreach. So trying to to engage young people in the world of science, engineering, and manufacturing. And I think there's some real crossovers. So we, I'll be keen to pick that up with you outside of the, the webinar. Um, we've been using things like Minecraft and creating worlds where you know young people can find out more about um, engineering and manufacturing because it's very much a, 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 hidden, um, a hidden industry and sector. But um, sorry, I'll stop talking about ingenuity. And I will hand over to Lydia um, who's going to talk to us about some of the work that she's been doing um, at University College Birmingham um, around sort of nursing and, and, and some of their, um, their, their health care. Over to you, Lydia. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so I'm just going to um, share a quick uh, PowerPoint with you um, just to um, hopefully um, encompass what we have been doing at um, University Colleges Birmingham. Um, so I'm hoping that you can uh, see my slides. Um, if I just switch to presentation mode. Yes, we can, Lydia. Perfect. Lovely. So um, I'm just going to quickly talk to you about how we use digital learning in health. Um, so I have introduced myself, um, but just to recap, I am a lecturer in adult nursing. I lecture on the um, adult nursing course, but um, predominantly I um, look after the care of the acutely ill adult. So I look at um, patients that are acutely unwell. So these might be in places like the emergency department or critical care. So I just thought I'd kind of introduce um, who we are um, before I begin explaining how we use um, digital learning. So um, 
we have lots of different programs available at University College Birmingham. Um, so we offer um, nursing in both adult and mental health. We also off offer physiotherapy degrees. We do um, top up courses as well for nursing associates so that they can get their NMC uh, UK registration. We also um, do a nursing associate program for those that are looking um, to join into a, a career in nursing, but maybe don't have um, enough UCAS points um, to go via the traditional degree route. And we're also currently developing programs for dietetics, paramedic science. Uh, we're currently looking at a master's in nursing as well as PG cert programs as well. So that's uh, just a little bit about us and what we offer as um, the School of Health at uh, University College Birmingham. So how do we use our digital learning? So um, as part of my module, um, Care of the Acutely Ill Adult, we use a software called um, Oxford Medical Simulation or OMS software. And this is a virtual reality software that's been developed um, for our students to use to help develop their competence and also their confidence when they're managing patients in um, an, uh, an acutely unwell patient in an acute setting. Um, so it's really immersive. Um, they get to be the student nurse um, working alongside a practice assessor as they would do in clinical practice. And they get to um, assess a patient in a safe environment. Um, we can use this actually independently or it can be integrated into our theory sessions. So um, our students have 24 seven access to it. They can use it any time, any place. Um, they can use it via a VR headset, but they can also use it on a laptop or a tablet. Um, and we can also, um, for example, if we are doing a teaching session on the respiratory system, we could load up a scenario with a um, patient that's come in with um, a respiratory problem. So maybe they've had an asthma attack. And we can work through it step by step with the students to kind of think what would be safe practice here? Um, what do the guidelines say? What does um, the NHS constitution say? How about the six C's of nursing? So we can integrate all of that theory into this kind of practical, fun way of them learning, which is fantastic. Um, we also use um, the OMS, so the Oxford Medical Simulation, as a, an assessment tool for the care of the acutely ill um, module. So they sit um, an OMS exam. Um, so it's kind of like a virtual reality OSCE. Uh, and OSCEs are um, objective structured clinical exams. And this is how we test nursing competence. Um, and it, it's been how we've done it for years and years and years. So it's usually a practical exam um, where our students are physically put into a situation and have to implement care. But we also use this as a virtual one. Um, it's got a little less pressure in it because um, it's not as scary maybe as having a real life patient in front of them, but it still has all of the learning outcomes that an actual OSCE would have. So it's fantastic to use it as an assessment tool. It forms about 25% of their overall mark and um, they have to achieve a 60% uh, pass rate for them to be successful um, in using it. So I've just included a few screen grabs here that you can see of the uh, software in use, um, but it's fantastic as well if they've never been in a situation like, for example, a cardiac arrest, they can witness that and they can build their confidence, which they may not have um, the first time they see it out in the real clinical practice areas. So it's really good um, to kind of see the different scenarios. So one of the reasons that we use it, um, it's really good because they're able to practice standardized scenarios. So um, the care um, in the scenarios is all uh, aligned with current evidence-based practice. So they are practicing um, safe care using the best possible of available evidence and that actually also changes as well as the um, students go through um, as the evidence changes as the students progress and they're expected to understand more um, the expectations change as well which is really good for that 
Um, they can also um, see complex patient scenarios and um, that they might not see out in clinical practice. Uh, for example, they might not be placed in the emergency department, but they might want to see what it's like when someone comes in post cardiac arrest in the um, community setting. So it's really good for them to have those experiences. It allows us to optimise our time and space and other resources. Um, obviously, if we're running a virtual OSCE, we don't need to worry about making sure we've got um, the ward space available, that we've got oxygen available, we've got all of the medications available because it's all provided uh, virtually. And like I said before, it allows that integration of theory into practice because we can actually use it as a teaching aid and we can stop things um, and we can have a discussion, which is really good for helping them link everything together to kind of think, well, I know about this law, I know about this ethic, but how does it fit into clinical practice? So it's really good um, to establish those links and strengthen those links. So what are the benefits to our students? So what do they actually say about it? Um, so one of the things that always comes back to us is they think it's really fun. Um, which I think is really good. Even we have um, a vast um, variety of students. We have some uh, younger learners that are very technology friendly. Um, they love absolutely everything to do with tech. And then we have some more mature learners that can find it sometimes quite difficult to um, adapt to the technology. But after they've um, had a few practices with it, the same thing always comes back. They think it's really, really fun. Um, it's the one of the things that we hear quite commonly is that they can make mistakes but it's a safe situation so um, if they do give the wrong medication uh, no no patient comes to harm <clears throat> excuse me um which is really really good um because i think there's a lot of press um negative press sometimes about um when nurses make mistakes and i think as a student nurse there's definitely a fear that you will make a mistake and having this virtual reality allows them to make those mistakes safely um they also get feedback in real time um so as soon as they've completed the scenario they get a list of what went really well what they need to improve on in future other things for them to consider um, it's, they can also investigate um, the patient and treat in real time. So if a patient is admitted and is unwell, then they can change the way um, a medication is given and they can see that in the patient, which is really good again for linking that knowledge um, to the practical element. So as well as having massive benefits to our students, we've also got uh, benefits to the sector. Um, so in terms of um, how we believe it helps with um, the health sector is it helps with developing communication, but also their critical decision making skills and their clinical reasoning. So again, that linking theory to practice. Well, this is the guideline, but what does it look like in practice? It really, really helps them understand those links. And then that helps support and develop their clinical decision making. It also develops their knowledge of treatment protocols and condition management guidelines, because like I said, um, it is based on the best um, available evidence that we have at that time and it does change as the guidance is updated um, which is fantastic because uh, it's reactive um, and it also strengthens and consolidates their existing knowledge um, so it just constantly builds and they constantly develop and it's fantastic to see their transition from a first year using the software up into a third year when they are ready to join the register they are ready to qualify as a nurse it's really good to see that transition so we also have, and just a quick touch before I run out of time, on, um, I'm going to talk to you about our anatomage table. So um, anatomage um, is one of the learning tools that we actually use in our, um, our anatomy and physiology classes, but we can also use it in classes where we talk about disease processes. So we might talk about heart disease or kidney disease. Um, and it's a fantastic um, piece of technology where we can actually um, dissect um, a, a human body, we can look at various organs, various structures, and we can see disease processes. 
um, as they occur. So if somebody wanted to know what um, heart uh, disease on a heart valve might look like, so endocarditis, we can actually have a look inside and we can see um, what that actually look like, looks like on a heart valve, which with a real patient we, we can't do. Um, so it's just a fantastic opportunity for them to really see um, what a particular muscular structure looks like, which again helps develop and underpin their understanding. Um, they can see nerve pathways, they can see how the blood flows through certain organs, they can see the impacts of smoking, um, poor diet on all of these different um, bodily functions. Uh, and organs, which is um, a great way, again, just to help consolidate and underpin all of that knowledge. Um, they are actually real bodies as well. They were donated, um, we've got four bodies uh, donated by um, people that have passed away to science. Um, so they, they're real structures, um, which again, just adds um, some credibility to what they're seeing, I think as well. Okay, um, so yeah, I believe that's me uh, done. Uh, so thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, thank you, Lydia. That's um, that's that's fascinating, and I'm 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 just sort of think was thinking about the, you know, those differences, but also the similarities that we're using this type of technology from you know everything from welding right through to um, nursing and I, I can really see the parallels between the anatomage table and actually some of the really complex systems and structures that, that need um, you know that we need to train people on in, in engineering and manufacturing but thank you for that that was uh, that was great um, and last but not least um, I'm going to hand over to Siobhan um, from Teesside University um, and uh, Siobhan and Darren are going to talk about some of the work that they've been, been doing up in Teesside. Brilliant. Can you see my screen okay? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Hi, everybody. Yeah, no, that, that's great. It's quite nice to kind of follow up from those previous two presentations, actually. So hopefully ours is a, um, slightly different. Um, but basically, um, as I was saying, I'm from Teesside University. And, and of course, this isn't around kind of how we've used the learning for our um, particular students, but it's more how we've actually worked with our industry partners, and our external partners, and our students through some um, really good internships is part of our Toucan studio at Teesside University. So, but what the great, great thing about it is, which quite like really aligns with today, it's around um, a lot of the projects that we've done in collaboration are, are around that sort of area of digital learning. So using technology, using digital to really have a kind of immersive, engaging experience for learning for those organizations that we've partnered with. And we've got just a little bit of background, we've got a kind of reputation um, for games and animation. We've got one of the longest running and biggest um, games um, organization um, schools um, in Teesside. And we've got some really, really excellent kind of animation um, courses and new immersive technology courses, virtual production courses as well. So it all kind of aligns really nicely. And the Toucan Studio that we have at Teesside gives us those students opportunities to work on these projects. So we're going to touch on a couple of projects, but just to start, um, what I want to do is um, just give a little bit of a, a little sound there, so go through just a bit of the background. So the projects that we've done are again very linked to the previous um, speakers, which is great. Is um, has been around kind of video, the sort of standard video and things digital video if you like I'll lower that um that right down a little bit but we've also done some really interesting projects and again really helping in terms of learning using um animation using effects so we did some really interesting work um with the LHS um around rehabilitation we've done some work that's already been touched on around app development which we'll touch on in a second um, 360 video working with the police and one of the projects we're going to focus on in a second is around working with the Cleveland Fire Brigade as well which we'll talk about but again you can see all the um, you know opportunities to use the technology with organisations like NHS as we just touched on and um, and um, you know the public sector and police so the um, let's move along the side so yeah, so so back very briefly in terms of that sort of studio that we run. So it's it's part of Teesside University, and this is where we do all these um, particular projects. And we found that all the projects that we've sort of started with are really now going into that kind of training. So really to how we use um, VR, immersive tech, animation, 
um, gaming technologies um, to you to really support learning. So I'm going to move and I'm going to bring in my colleague um, Darren Abbott as well in a second um, and this to talk about some of those um, projects and particularly around the Cleveland um, um, working with Cleveland Fire and, and also that sort of complemented really well with a project we did with the Cleveland Police as well um, using virtual reality. So I'll bring Darren in next just to talk through, I'll just pause the video for a second, Darren, if you want to give a little bit of background around the project called V Commander, which is with Cleveland Fire Brigade. Now let's, I'll let Darren give a little bit of background into it. I can play the video for you, Darren, um, when you say, and then we can give sort of a more broader sort of outline of how we worked with that um, partner. Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hi, so uh, product um, development number one, or V Commander, uh, as we call it, was, um, was a project that uh, came to us um, from the emergency services. It um, involved the fire brigade after they spoke to the police, um, after we did a project with the police as well. So word gets around and these, um, these bodies want to join forces really to utilize this new technology um, and also make sure that it's uh, the right learning tool. Uh, v Commander came about, it's not really about putting fires out as, uh, as such. Um, we've got um, lots of uh, government information around Gren Grenfell Towers and things like that. And um, Cleveland Fire Brigade are one of the, uh, the top Comas uh, level one Fire Brigade Institutes uh, in the whole uh, in the whole of Europe, actually, just because we've got a heavy um, chemical engineering um, sector on T side, or we used to have. So with this training scenario already set up, they wanted to go from you know the old fashioned video format to what's new and what's out there. But when, once we heard about it, we wanted to push it even further. So it's not just about virtual reality, but we. We are using evidence-based learning, so we're taking it from the teaching and learning side of it, and what universities are really good at, and applying that to the project as well from the university side. So the Fire Brigade want something, and we want an, another part from the university, and this project pulls it all together, really. V Commander um, is a little play on words um, where it's the gold commanders, so every, um, every Fire Brigade force in the UK and around the world now, um, have a, a bronze commander, silver commander, and a gold commander. And the gold commander needs to be absolutely uh, the best of the best at their job, um, usually around decision-making, um, protocols, um, government guidelines, that, that, that way of thinking, and also implementing them in the right and safe manner. Um, but like other... Um, presenters have spoken today about um, it's almost impossible to get hands-on um, experience of this straight away so one thing that they wanted was some um, time in memory uh, muscle memory uh, to do these training scenarios and this is where this came on so would you like to play the, the video thanks Siobhan you're the fire and rescue services Oh, I'll just go to the beginning. Cleveland Fire Brigade, like many other fire and rescue services, prime purpose is to save life, protect property, and safeguard both the environment and actually the local heritage. Thankfully, through our prevention and protection work, we've managed to reduce the number of operational incidents we attend. Our response time is the best in the country, um, so in Cleveland, you're probably the safest you can be, but we want you to be safer and we want our incident commanders to know exactly what they're doing when they get to them jobs. V Commander is a, a total virtual reality incident command package. Uh, it's where we can take the incident commanders and actually put them under a bit of pressure. So we can push them as, as much as we want or as little as we want as a progression when they get outside. So what we decided to do is go down the virtual reality route um, to give them that so we could put them under the pressure that they need. We wanted to stay ahead of the curve. So we spoke to Teesside University to find out what they could do for us because we know they're one of the top virtual reality specialists. We wanted something that could predict real life what would happen. The artificial intelligence that was built in, we had to really work hard on how we wanted that because we didn't want structured answers. So we wanted if our incident commanders want to say something that they can just do what they want and, and the program will react accordingly. 
So we used real crews for the motion capture to accurately reflect what would happen on the instant ground and it would happen in real time. Within a short space of time you can run multiple incidents and that gives you a little bit more confidence on turning out to operational incidents. I think after a couple of minutes of using it, you feel like you're at the incident and you're interacting with the people, the characters in there. It enables us to do stuff that we haven't been able to necessarily mimic in the past. We can, we can now with this and it's a, I think it's a brilliant tool that we can move forward with. It will never take the place of what we do outside. It will never do that, but it's a really good blended learning tool that puts you in an environment that is virtually real. <laughs> We still do attend a range of incidents. Critical to that, of course, is having somebody in charge leading those teams that actually can make those life-saving decisions. And therefore, we need to consider how can technology assist us. Thankfully, in partnership with Teesside University, this is truly a world-class partnership and a world-class product. Thanks, Siobhan. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, I think as well, just to add, and I'm aware of time, so we'll zoom through the last um, slides, but is um, the great thing about that was we worked very collaboratively. It wasn't just a one-off project. It's been kind of really building um, over about kind of the last sort of three or four years, definitely before, co well before COVID. And so it's been um, going backwards and forwards and also using a lot of the um, facilities that we've got at TSUN, like the, um, just being mentioned around kind of motion capture as well. So it's, and now we've got the opportunity. Um, and again, it's about bringing in other sort of digital technologies like artificial intelligence to really kind of, um, you know, improve it. So each year we just add to that product. So it's very bespoke, um, but also um, we can, we're looking at how we can actually roll that out in terms of other, um, commanders, um, fire, com you know, fire stations actually using it as well. So it's been yeah. a very collaborative effort. We've got, since the video that you saw there, uh, we've actually embedded um, artificial intelligence in there and also biometrics as well. So we've got an evidence-based learning approach to, uh, to the commanders so we can test their pulse rates, their heart rates, et cetera. And we've got um, timeline video evidence of all of that. So all of the pressure curves are, are all um, put out. And with it being artificial intelligence um, embedded in there, it's never a scripted answer either. It's actually, um, it reacts to what the commander is saying. It's all voice led. There's no, there's no game controllers at all. Uh, we've gone away with all of that. It's all hand gesture and voice gesture. Brilliant. Exactly, it's like real life. Thank you, Darren. Um, so the other just the other one I just want to mention actually um, is again it's about how um, a very different type of technology that that hasn't perhaps been touched on that may be useful as well is how we've worked um, with the NHS as well to develop an app again but it's for training for those um, who are kind of wanting to in terms of ultrasound so those are practitioners that work in ultrasound but they want to um, a little bit like what Lydia was talking about they want to really kind of test when they're doing their scans that what they're doing is correct and actually get feedback on that and we've developed an app with the NHS to do that as well so again and we're of time but if anybody's interested in looking at that so it's a slightly different approach in terms of how you use digital um, technology for, for training but I will leave it at there um, if that's okay and um, move back to um, any questions presumably. Thank you Sarah. Um, thank you very much Siobhan and, and, and Darren. Um, uh, another fascinating um, example and it, it strikes me that you know, the possibilities are endless really because we've seen examples of using um, sort of the technology and, and you know the, the digital tools that are available to us to you know engage people in um, careers and, and opportunities uh, for learning, but right through to, you know, sort of safe ways to, you know, assess people as, as, as well. So in the time we've got left, I am going to, um, I'm going to have host's privilege um, and, and cherry pick the, the, the questions. So um, there's a couple of questions that I think are around um, accessibility of this type of technology. So for sort of small and medium companies, but also sort of barriers to the, the you know, the wider adoption of digital, sorry, digital technology in, in learning. Um, Majid, can I start with you? How, how accessible do you think this is for, for small and medium companies? Or is it at this stage only really 
um, you know, going to work for, you know, the Scottish Waters and the, um, you know, the larger companies in, in, in the country. Yeah, no, it's a very good question. I mean, in terms of the metaverse learning programs, we, we made it so kind of affordable uh, because you can host it yourself, uh, license wise, for example, per program, we try to make it uh, some of the scenario as cheap as 750 pound or a thousand pound per scenario, unlimited number of access for all the learners. So that was kind of a point to be made before when if you develop a program costs 100,000, no one gonna buy that from being the SME. But if you make it available for a affordable price or uh, we do a bundle of 10 headsets for 500 pound, as an example. So it's basically, we make it really cheap. But if you develop something from scratch, then yes, that would cost money, definitely. Okay. Um any of the other panelists want to um, want to add to that around barriers or accessibility of the, the types of, of technology? I'd be quite interested from one of the universities, particularly with that, you know, the focus on on what students can do to help, um, you know, make this more accessible and and um, access for smaller companies. Yeah, guy can come in there. Go ahead, Darren. Yeah, in terms of the accessibility, um, we, we we think about accessibility from a, a two-stage part. One, it's from the customers, but also um, it's for the user as well. So it's not just about, uh, it might be accessibility around disability as well. Um, a strange thing that, you know, um, that's built in already into virtual reality, that if somebody in a wheelchair puts a headset on, it automatically levels up to their height so they never see anything that they're not used to seeing at, at their sort of height so in terms of accessibility it's got some really nice tools um bedding it bedded in there in terms of the cost to the end user when they when they develop the teesside university we offer um a scheme for the students to get involved on in these projects which obviously helps keep the costs down as well and uh just like uh, majid said we can do a one-off project, but also all of the projects that you see from Teesside University are done with using free, totally free software. Um, so they developed um, the software that we use is totally free for the end user if they want to continue utilizing that project. And um, Darren, one of the questions that, sorry, it's a follow-up around, you know, does, does, is, does, does this need a huge investment in equipment? Um, for uh, employers or individuals to 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 use this this type of um, these type of, of tools and programs. No, probably about two years ago, I got to that point where the the the, the cash um, the cost associated with um, hardware um, came down below the threshold. So we've spoken to lots of companies about what their budget is around around training, and mm -hmm. to now virtual reality actually not only fits in there but it's actually um sometimes cheaper than video editing and video processing as well it depends on the final outcome obviously um but yes um we can utilize a project over a year and make use of a year's budget or we can do a one-off prototype to to test the scenario out uh, just like lydia mentioned in the in the medical scenario as well and once you've got, uh, we've got another medical scenario set up um, where once you've done a hospital sort of wing, I don't know, a hospital um, um, room and you've utilised the beds in 3D and the patient in 3D and you've got the drip and the ECG already done, the costs associated next time can be free or very, very minimal as well. Brilliant. Um, Lydia, uh, uh a question for a question for you in terms of um i'm conscious of time but uh, it's amazing how quickly the hour goes isn't it i, I was actually if we had time going to ask each of the panelists um, about what do you see as the, the the future opportunities that technology can bring from a learning perspective so lydia do you want to kick off and, and i will go to each of you um and we'll overrun very slightly um thank you um so uh, yeah, I think um, technology is going to be integrated a lot more um, in the future, particularly in health. 
Um, the NHS is currently investing millions into becoming more digital. Dig oh, I can't even say that this afternoon. Digitalized. There we go. Um, so yeah, I think uh, the education of nurses, education of doctors, physios, OTs, anyone that's involved in the NHS will become more kind of. We'll have that more uh, technology. Tech. I should just give up now while I'm ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, it'll definitely have um, more of that um, advanced technology. Brilliant. Um, Majid, thoughts on um, what, what the future might hold, what opportunities the, the, the leaps forward in technology bring? Yeah, I mean, technology is a kind of interesting uh, topic, really, because what I kind of found out over, over the last 30 years, as soon as you mentioned technology, uh, lots of kind of organization thing, it's it's hardware, it's VR headset, I go and buy the most expensive thing. My really advice, and I hope my kind of uh, other kind of representatives agree with me, is not about hardware, it's not about buying expensive, uh, shiny thing. You need to understand how that benefits your business, how affordable it is. When it's, once you buy any, any specific hardware, uh, can you have application and program uh, accessible into that? I've seen many, many cases. You buy lots of organization, colleges, university, buy lots of hardware and they all shelf because you can't get any content on them. So please be careful what you get in and then st study that, see their flexibility and uh, the maintenance and update of such technology. Um, and Siobhan, final word to you on what the future might hold. Yeah, I think um, we've been looking at, um, and, it, and it's actually exactly what Majid's saying as well. Sorry, just to follow on from that. It's really, it's um, it's really being careful as well when you're choosing all this, because actually sometimes something that's really low, actually low tech will achieve what you're wanting, you know, so, that's, so just to follow on from that. But in terms of the future, we've been looking at some really interesting work around immersive classrooms. And I think that's that's really exciting. So that's and and you're seeing it even up in Teesside. Sort of six form college is really embracing this as well. So that's like projected video on the floor, the roof, all the way around. Um, and it, because it is about a very new generation that that do learn in very different ways now as well. You know, in terms of that engagement. So I think that's really exciting. And that whole kind of area of virtual production, how games and animation and film are all coming together. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, I am going to bring us to a close because we are now two minutes over our, our allotted slot. Um, thank you very much to those uh, people who've attended. Uh, the session has been recorded and we will be uh, sharing it both via social media and on the Ingenuity website. Um, thank you to Majid, Majid, Lydia, Darren and Siobhan um, for keeping us um, entertained and, and, and for me personally absolutely fascinated for the, the last hour. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.